so today we're going to cover chapter five, section two, and we're going to talk about trigonometric functions. So we're going to be doing sine, cosine, and tangent, and it's reciprocal function. Now, we did this last year in geometry, so you might have re remembered the acronym SOCATOA. Now, you can use this acronym, but what's gonna be easier to do is because you're gonna be given an order pair, is to memorize the relationship or the ratios as y over r, x over r, y over x because you're gonna be given an order pair. And if you remember in an order pair, the first number is X, the second number is Y. Now, we're also gonna to need to find the R value, and the R value is gonna really be our hypotenuse. So let me go ahead and show you. So let's say we have our coordinate plane still here, and let's say we've graphed a triangle Let's say they've asked us to graph the 135 degree angle. So let's say it's over here. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a triangle. And we're gonna create the triangle by drawing the side of the triangle back to the x-axis. Because our angle that we're referencing is gonna be here. That's gonna be our theta. So this would be our opposite, which is gonna be our y value. This is gonna be our hypotenuse, which is gonna be our R value, and then the adjacent to the angle is gonna be our X value. So if you think about it, what we're really doing here is Pythagorean theorem. So if you remember, it was A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but instead of A, B, and C, we're using X, Y, and R. So we would be doing X squared plus Y squared equals r squared and then remember in order to find the value of r instead of r squared we would be square rooting and that cancels the square and that's how we get the formula r is equal to x squared plus y squared under the square root and that's what's written over here in the words so you'll be given an order pair you're gonna to need to find the R value. Once you get the values of X, Y, and R, you're just gonna put them into the fractions. Now, one way maybe to help you remember what goes with what, if you think about it, we're in a Catholic school and probably in your theology classes, they probably talked about sin. So if you think of sign as being sin, you could think of why should you sin? It's wrong. So the Y goes with sine over the R. And then cosine will have the X over the R. And then it's reciprocal. The reciprocal to sine is going to be cosecant. The reciprocal to cosine is going to be secant. And then tangent doesn't have the R. It's just Y over X. So let's go ahead and let me show you an example of what you may see. So let's say I ask you to find the value of the six trig functions given the order pair three comma four. So you'll be given an order pair and it's gonna say find the value of the six trig functions. So remember, this is X, this is Y. I need to find R and remember R is found by doing X squared plus y squared under the square root. So I'm gonna square three, I'm gonna square four. I need to follow order of operations, do the exponents first, then add them, and then square root it. So my r value is five. Now that I have the value of x, it's three, y is four, and r is five. Now all I need to do is take what's written here in the blue and I'm gonna put them in to my fractions. So you're gonna memorize that the sine of theta, you always need to have an angle there. Could be any variable. 
theta is going to be the most common one. So you're going to memorize that sine. You could either do still your Sokotoa. It would be opposite over hypotenuse if you draw the triangle. Or just memorize it as y should you sin, y over r, and it would be four-fifths. The reciprocal to sine is cosecant. So all I do is flip hypotenuse over opposite, or what's better, just flip r over y, five over four. Then for cosine, cosine, since sine used y, cosine will use the x over r, or again, if you'd rather do adjacent over hypotenuse, the adjacent is always the x value. The opposite is always gonna be the y value. And then plug it in. So then my x was three, my r was five. So cosine is three fifths. It's reciprocal is secant. Flip it, either hypotenuse over adjacent or r over x, and it's five over three. For tangent, that's gonna just be y over, you can either do TOA, opposite over adjacent, if you draw the triangle, or it's y over x, so tangent would be four over three. Cotangent is the reciprocal, so flip it, and either do adjacent over opposite, or x over y, and it's three-fourths. So when you're given a coordinate and they ask you to find the value of the six trig functions, all you need to do is pull out the x and the y from the order pair, find the r value by doing x squared plus y squared and square root it, and then plug it in. Now, if that r value is not a perfect square, if it's still under the radical, you'll need to leave it in simplest radical form if when you put it into the fractions, if the radicals in the denominator, you're gonna to have to rationalize. And we're gonna see this coming up. Notice in the blue there, after the reciprocals here, you see all this X cannot, all these cannot equal zero. Because remember, if the denominator of your fraction is a zero, then that function is undefined. So that's all that means right there. Now I'm gonna to go to the bottom and talk about um, the quadrants. Now, the R value is always gonna be a positive number. It's a distance. It's the length of that hypotenuse. So R will always be positive, but your X and Y could be negative numbers, depending on the order pair that's given and the quadrant that the angle ends up in. So for example, down here at the bottom, this would be an example of an order pair that was graphed in quadrant one, where you know that the signs on the order pair are gonna be positive, positive. Now, you notice the example I just did, the order pair was three, four. So when I see that both the X and the Y are positive, I know that when I create this triangle, it's gonna be in quadrant one. And all six, trig functions are gonna be positive in quadrant one. And if you notice, all six of my answers were positive fractions. Now in quadrant two, this is where the order pair is gonna be a negative X, but a positive Y. So in this quadrant, the only of the six that are gonna be a positive Fraction are gonna be sine and it's reciprocal, cosecant. The other four are gonna be negative. So cosine, it's reciprocal, tangent, and it's reciprocal. These are all gonna be negative fractions in quadrant number two. And then in quadrant number three, down here, 
Remember the ordered pairs are negative, negative down in that quadrant. And the only two of the six that will be positive in quadrant three are gonna be tangent and cotangent. And I'm gonna teach you a little saying or a little acronym to help you remember this. And then lastly, in quadrant four, the signs on the order pair are positive, negative. So here, the only ones that are gonna be positive of the six are gonna be cosine and it's reciprocal, which is secant. Now, remember, a lot of times I see students get confused and they think that the two S words go together as the function and it's reciprocal and the two C words, but one is an S and one's a C. So sine and cosecant, and then cosine and secant. Those are the reciprocals. Are, are any positives? Positives in this one, these two. The other four are negative. So I'll draw my little axis here. And my acronym is gonna be all students take calculus. Okay, and we're gonna take the first letter of each one. So the C in calculus, that's for the trig function cosine and it's reciprocal. The T in take is for tangent and it's reciprocal cotangent. The S in students, is for sine and its reciprocal cosecant, but the all, this means all six are positive. So the only ones that are gonna be positive are gonna be sine and cosecant in quadrant two, tangent and cotangent in three, and then cosine and secant in quadrant four. But all six are positive in quadrant number one. Here, where they're telling us the terminal side of angle theta in standard position is gonna pass through the point 815. And it wants us to find the six trig values of theta. So let me go ahead and make my little coordinate plane here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So way up here is this order pair. So it says the terminal side, so this will be the terminal side of my angle. And again, when you create the triangle, it's always back to the x-axis. So here's my right triangle, here is theta, so that's that angle that it stated. So my X value is eight. My Y value is 15. I need to find the R value. So in order to do this, we're gonna do R, square, R equals X squared plus Y squared under the square root. X is eight, Y is 15. 64 plus 225, 64 plus 225 is 289, square root it, and my R value is 17. This is actually a common triple, if you remember back from your geometry days. So my R is 17. Now, if you prefer to do the Sokotoa, remember your Y is always gonna be the opposite to theta, the X will be the adjacent side, and the R value is your hypotenuse. Now notice this order pair was positive, positive. This is quadrant one. Once I take my X, Y, and R and put them into the six trig functions, all six fractions should be positive because it's in quadrant one. So let's go ahead and try it. So now I have X is equal to eight, 
y is equal to 15 and r is equal to 17. So I'm just gonna go plug them in. So I'm gonna do the sine of theta. Remember that's gonna be y should you sin, so y over r. If you wanna do the SOHCAHTOA, this would be opposite over hypotenuse. But the y value is 15, my r value is 17. So that's my answer there. And then it's reciprocal is cosecant. So you'll flip it, r over y, or hypotenuse over opposite, but just flip the fraction, 17 over 15. Then for cosine, since the sine uses the y, cosine uses the x, it's x over r, or again, you could do adjacent over hypotenuse, and my x value was eight, my r value is 17. For secant, it's reciprocal. We're gonna flip it, r over x, or hypotenuse over adjacent, 17 over eight. And then lastly, tangent. Tangent is y over x, or if you do the TOA, opposite over adjacent. My y value was 15, my x value was eight. And then it's reciprocal, cotangent, flip it, or adjacent over opposite, and then it's eight over 15. So this is what it's asking us to do. Once they give you an order pair, all you're gonna do is take the order pair, it'll be your X and your Y value, you'll need to find R, and then plug it in to what you memorize. So for the next one, notice the coordinate or the order pair they're giving us is negative three, negative four. This is ending up in quadrant number three. Remember in quadrant number three, the only ones, if I do my all students take calculus, the only ones that are positive in this quadrant are gonna be tangent and cotangent. Because if you think about it, the order pair was negative three, negative four, so even when I put it into tangent, negative divided by a negative turns positive. But I gotta find my R value. This is also another common triple. So here would be my triangle. And again, it's always back to the x-axis. So here would be theta. Here would be the right angle. This will be negative four, negative three. And let's do the R x squared plus y squared under the radical. So negative three squared plus negative four squared. Nine plus 16, add that together, square root it, and my hypotenuse or my r value is positive five. Again, that r value will always be a positive number. So this was y. This is x, you wanna think of this as being adjacent, opposite, hypotenuse, you can do that. But honestly, I think you're gonna be better off memorizing the six trig functions with the variables x, y, and r. So now, let's go ahead and plug them in. So now that I found r, it's five. Now I can take these three values of these variables and plug them in to the six trig functions. So here, sine of theta. Remember sine, y should you sin? Y over r, so negative four over five. It's reciprocal, cosecant. R over y, just flip the fraction. Five over negative four. And it doesn't matter if you put the negative sign in front of the fraction, 
as soon as one of the numbers in the fraction is negative, that makes the whole fraction negative. However, if the numerator and the denominator are negative, it makes the fraction positive. And we're gonna see that coming up with tangent. Cosine is gonna use x. So for cosine of theta, x over r, so that's going to be negative 3 over 5. And then its reciprocal is secant. Flip it, r over x. So 5 over negative 3. And then lastly, tangent, which again, remember in quadrant 3, is going to be a positive fraction. So if I put negative 4 over negative 3, Negative divided by a negative, positive 4 over 3. And the same thing when I flip it for its reciprocal, x over y, and then negative 3 over negative 4, negative divided by a negative, and it's positive 3 over 4. So by, you know, checking out your all students take calculus, the only ones here should have been positive are tangent and cotangent, which they were. The other four functions are all negative. Okay, so, so far we've only talked about finding the functions when they're in the quadrant. Now what we're gonna talk about are when the angles are on the axis, and these are called quadrant angles. So the quadrant angles are gonna be the 90, the 180, the 270. Over here, this could also be zero or 360. Um, you could also do negative. So this could also be negative 90 down here at the 270. This would also be negative 180, and this would be negative 270 here depending on how you draw your angle, whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise. So for this one, what we're gonna be using is they're not gonna give you an order pair. You're gonna use that first order pair that you encounter, that first integer order pair. So for the 90, you're gonna use the order pair zero, positive one. So this order pair up here for the 90, and then for the 180, you're gonna use the negative one zero. For the 270, you're gonna use the zero negative one. And then over here for the zero and the 360, you'll use the one comma zero. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. We're still doing the same thing, the y over r, the x over r for the sine, cosine, tangent, and then it's reciprocals, but we're just going to use the order pair that's associated with that quadrant angle. Now, for the R value, whenever you use this first integer order pair, your R value is always going to be 1. But let's say you forget that. So let's say we wanted to do find the R value for this order pair, for the 90. So let's say for the 90 degrees, which is the order pair, zero comma one. So if you go ahead and do this, x squared plus y squared under the radical, zero squared plus one squared gives you zero plus one, and zero plus one is one, the square root of one is one. This is leading us into the unit circle. So here, what we'll be doing is, anytime you use these four order pairs, your R value is always going to be one. Technically, you could use any point on those axes, but then you're just going to have to simplify the fraction. So let's go ahead and take a look. So for the sine of 90, we know that the order pair we're using for 90 degrees is going to be the 0 comma 1. So X is 0, Y is 1, and my R value is going to be 1. Remember, sine is going to be y over r. So if I go ahead and put this in, it's going to be 1 over 1, which is just 1. Reciprocal, 
r over y, still 1 over 1, and cosecant of 90 is 1. For cosine of 90, you're going to memorize that as to be x over r. My x value was 0. My r is 1. Whenever there's a 0 in the numerator, it just simplifies to a 0. However, for the reciprocal, the r over x, 1 over 0, remember, we can't have a 0 in the denominator. A 0 in the denominator makes this function undefined, so this answer is no solution. For tangent, we're going to do y over x. So my y value was 1, my x is 0. So again, can't have a 0 on the bottom, so this answer is undefined. Over here, x over y, this time the 0 is in the top, so this answer is 0. So now for the 180, we're using this order pair, the negative 1, 0. So my x is negative 1, my y is 0, but my r is still 1. So if you think about it, this r is like the radius, and the radius length is going to be 1 if you measure from 0, 0 over here to negative 1, 0. So sign again, y over r. My y is 0. My r is 1. When there's a 0 in the numerator, the answer is just 0. Cosecant, we flip it, r over y. Can't have a zero on the bottom, so this answer is undefined. Cosine x over r, negative 1 over 1, so cosine of 180 is negative 1. If you flip it, we still get the same thing. It's positive 1 over negative 1, which simplifies the negative 1. Tangent, y over x, 0 over 1, negative 1, which gives me 0. Flip it, x over y, negative 1 over 0, can't have a 0 on the bottom, so undefined. So this one is just identifying the reciprocal identities. So again, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Reciprocal of cosine is secant. Reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. For example, and we're going to do this on the next slide, let's say I give you, so given that the sine of theta equals four fifths, and I ask you to find the cosecant of theta, what do you think we need to do? Just flip it, right? So it's 5 over 4 because they're reciprocals. Okay, so for this one, it says to find cosine of theta if secant of theta is 5 thirds. So remember, secant and cosine are reciprocals, so just flip it. Here they want me to find sine of theta given cosecant. So again, these are reciprocals, so I'm going to flip it. However, when I flip it, I get a square root in the bottom of my fraction. I can't leave that there. I have to rationalize. I got to get rid of the square root of the bottom. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by square root 6. I'm going to rationalize. And then 2 times the square root of 6. I got a pair of square root 6's in the bottom. So the 6 comes out. But if I can simplify more, I need to simplify. I can simplify the 2 and the 6 that are outside. And I can change this to a 1 and this to a 3. So negative square root 6 over 3. So if when you flip your fraction, if it ends up with a radical in the denominator, we must rationalize. So that you might get a question where it's going to say, is this possible? 
the sine of theta, could it ever equal positive two using these solution intervals? What does sine always have to be? A number between what? Negative, Negative one and positive one, right? So it's never gonna equal two, so this would be impossible. However, if I said sine of theta equals one half, is that possible? Yeah, because it's a number between negative one and positive one. So if they give you any questions in the homework or ever on a standardized test, and they wanna know, is this possible? That's where you use the solution intervals. Now, if I said tangent of theta equals one, this is possible. Because remember, tangent is all real numbers. Or tangent of theta equals half. These are both possible because tangent is all real numbers. So if they give you questions like possible or impossible, you're using the solution intervals. Now, whenever you're writing any of these identities here, you always need to include some type of symbol for the angle. And most of the time they're gonna use theta. Now, um, you should memorize them for the SAT. Another thing that you're gonna need to do is when we give you the reference sheet, we're just gonna give you the identities this way, but be able to take, for example, this first one and be able to manipulate it. In other words, be able to solve it for sine. So in other words, subtract cosine squared theta to the other side of the equal sign and get sine squared theta is equal to one minus cosine squared theta. So be able to manipulate any of these identities and rearrange them. And you're gonna see coming up why we're gonna do this. Okay, so on this one, this again is like a reference sheet. You should be familiar with the solution intervals. So remember, sine and cosine, they should always be a fraction because if you think back to your geometry days, sine of theta was always opposite over hypotenuse and hypotenuse was always the biggest side. So it was always a fraction. Same thing with, for cosine. It was adjacent over hypotenuse. And again, the bigger number was always gonna be in the denominator. So it's always gonna be a regular fraction. So that's why this first interval here, stating that sine and cosine are gonna be numbers between negative one and positive one. They're gonna be a positive or a negative fraction. And then for the reciprocal, which I highlighted in blue here, that's just going to be an improper fraction. So they're going to be numbers that are greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to negative 1. And then for tangent and cotangent, though, these are going to be any number. Because depending on what number's on the opposite and adjacent side, it could be either an improper fraction or a regular fraction. So it's any number. So that's why it's all real numbers. And again, you're gonna need to be familiar with the Pythagorean and the quotient identities, be able to rearrange them and solve them for any part of it. Because we're gonna be using these identities when we're gonna be verifying and simplifying our trig equations. Always remember to include a variable for the angle. The most common one you'll see is either theta or x.